it was draining. It was emotionally um, daunting. It was devastating. And, you know, I think that was the, that was the day where I said, you know, I don't know how much longer I really can keep doing this. I just will never forget the the fear and and I just I'm I, I I'm speechless. After that, I've had a couple restraining orders for people. You have to prepare yourself that you are going to see something that you wish or thought that you'd never have to see in your entire life. The son who held his brother's head in his arms while he bled out, like the worst day of his life, 24 hours later. And he was sobbing, talking about his brother. And I was sobbing. I remember it was a couple of minutes before I was going live and the police officer came over to me and he's like, I'm just going to stand by you because I see a man near us with a gun. And then my producer's in my ear and she's like, 30 seconds. I, I grew up as an Air Force brat. I lived overseas for the first 18 years of my life. So all that traveling and being in different countries and seeing, you know, firsthand what the reporting was going on in those countries and then witnessing some current events as well. Um, it shaped my curiosity. I told myself I'm never going to work in news while I was in college. I don't want to make little social media videos of, you know, the dog and the duck that are BFFs. Like, that's really cute, but that's just not what I wanted to do. For me, journalism is an, is an opportunity to tell the world's stories and to get to know people. It is a huge responsibility um, and also a huge privilege to do this job because you have people's stories in your hands, and at the end of the day, you decide how you're going to tell that story. And you can't show emotion when you're on TV at all, so you let the story just do it for you. So um, dealing with that comes through and on your writing and how you tell it. The best journalists are people first, and I've carried that with me to this day. I think people forget as a journalist, I mean, you have the, the highest highs are so high and the lowest lows are so low. It's just a lot and it's just so like, you get in the motions and you're just doing it and doing it and doing it. But then when you take a second to step back and you're like, oh my gosh, I just did all of that today. How did I physically do that? I don't know, <laughs> I don't know. It's burnt out in a way where you're tired, you're exhausted, your mind is just constantly working all the time. But to me, it's my passion and I know this is what I am supposed to be doing. I feel that in my heart, but the challenges that come with this job on a day-to-day -day basis, I wasn't expecting it to be as hard as, as it is. There's a lot of behind the scenes work that goes into what we do that people don't see, but I, I also see that as a compliment too, because we're making our jobs look a lot easier than they really are. How do you compartmentalize? How do you ask the tough questions when somebody just lost their son? maybe to drunk driving. How do you ask them questions about that? It's, it's heartbreaking. And I've had so many people say, well, it's just your job, you have to do it. But sometimes, you know, you're, you're meeting people on their worst day of their life. Kristen Morand was on the scene as police search for a suspect. The Henry County Sheriff's Office is investigating a homicide that happened at this home. It's just, you come home and you're like, and you finally get to process like, oh my gosh, that just happened to me someone's house just burned down today and they just lost everything. And I had to cover that. I mean, I think one of the hardest days for me was covering the um, aftermath of the Sandy Hook, the Newtown school shooting. Natalie Morales is in Newtown this morning. Natalie, good morning to you. Good morning, David. Well, with exactly a week to go until Christmas, the Christmas tree here at the center of the town behind me is now a growing makeshift memorial. You see and seeing, you know, the little faces of, you know, first graders who had been killed, that just crushed me. I mean, I even remember looking across at the cameraman. He was crying. And, and I was just like in shell shock all that morning. I kind of went home and I remember laying down in bed and just kind of like feeling like I, I was crushed. And then got up the next morning very early and just kind of keep going. You just have to keep going. I mean, this job is 24 seven. It is nonstop. News is nonstop. 
I've had days where, you know, I go home and I just, I just cry because I'm like, I don't know how else to react to all the stress that I'm feeling. It's really afterwards. That's when you have to take the time for yourself and really address yourself and address your emotions. It's after that adrenaline starts to come down, you're leaving that first opportunity you get to be by yourself. You have to like check yourself and take that time to reset. You got to be able to stick up for yourself and say, I, I just don't think it's going to work. Um, and you're going to have to push back sometimes. There comes a time and place where being the best isn't always the number one priority or safety is. There have been <laughs> multiple instances where I'm catcalled, whether it's me carrying my equipment and I look like I'm struggling carrying all this equipment and a car drives by and men or whoever roll down their windows and say something or they beat their car. I mean, it's endless. And there are times when I'm sent out two hours away from my office to the middle of nowhere where cell service isn't really that good. And I have to unfortunately think of safety for myself. Okay, what's my escape plan? What's my escape route? What if something happens? What should I do? I was there, I was by myself and then fights broke out. And it was almost like this huge divide between Cuban Nation police and Cuban Nation people. And there was pepper spray and I got pepper sprayed. And it was just, I found myself in the middle of this huge brawl. You have to know what your line is and you have to plant your feet in the sand where that line is and do not do anything you're uncomfortable with. And my managers were like, well, go door knock. Ask people what happened, what they thought about this police standoff. And I'm like, absolutely not. And sometimes I have to say no. And I have to tell them, I don't feel safe. I don't feel comfortable. I've had a couple of people where, I mean, their, their name is on a list of not to let them in the building. I had somebody sending me a letter. It started with one letter a month and then it escalated to three letters a week. And I remember my managers really wanted me to go live where this flooding was. And I was like, I just don't feel safe. And they're like, okay, well, why don't you call the police department and have an officer out there with you? I remember it was a couple of minutes before I was going live and the police officer came over to me and he's like, I'm just going to stand by you because I see a man near us with a gun. And I was shocked and I was a little thrown off for that live hit. ABC 13's Kristen Morand is live in Danville with a look at road conditions there and what to expect in the hours to come. Kristen. I was like, uh, uh, uh yeah, um, so you, you can see the, 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 the flooding behind me. I was just shocked because I was like, oh my goodness. Anything could happen in that moment. You know, this, the same way they tell you as, you know, parents, when you're on a flight, put your oxygen mask on you first before you take care of your children. You have to remember that when you go into these places. So you need to figure out ways to make it possible to have your health be a priority too, as well as your job. You know, I was actually assaulted um, in 2021 or in 2020 on the job. Uh, covering a Blue Lives Matter rally. And they got mad that I told them to back up and they whipped me <laughs> with an American flag. I was like, how ironic that I just got hit in that back of the head with an American flag as a journalist in 2020. We actually did start hiring security, which, you know, I, I remember when that decision was made. It was wonderful to have that peace of mind. But I remember another part of me thinking, is this what it's come to? <laughs> and what I did not expect, I did not expect a first impeachment. I did not expect a second impeachment. I didn't, we certainly did not expect a global pandemic to hamper all of this. And um, we also didn't expect an insurrection at the Capitol. And then I just kept seeing more and more videos of these people breaking into the Capitol. And then one of our reporters started sending pictures of bloodied Capitol police officers, which was really disturbing. And it really felt like our space had been violated. Our space have been violated, America's space have been violated. And my favorite is when somebody drives by and blows the horn and yells random profanities at you, followed by fake news. And I don't get to walk into their job and start yelling things at them. So why is it okay for people, as I'm in the middle of a taxing job, trying to make a difference in my community, why is it okay for them to yell that? Listen, there's a critic for everyone. Everybody's a critic. So you've got to have a thick skin, be ready to take it, but also 
be able to back it up. If people question, well, where'd you get that information? I think people can say that they don't trust the media and we're not trusted sources and that's fake news, but okay, then why are you turning on your television every day and tuning in and getting this information? Journalism has never been more important. We have a huge responsibility on our shoulders to, to make sure people understand these are the facts. You wanna make sure that a trust, that a trust exists. I wanna feel like I'm someone that they can turn to and trust to get their information that I'm giving out the facts, I'm giving them the facts so they can decide from that what their opinion is on the matter, because my opinion doesn't matter. My hope is that people start to trust journalists again, um, but I'm also hopeful, like I mentioned, for the flip side of that, where journalists make themselves trustworthy again. I hope journalism continues to thrive until the day I die, and then some. I, I just hope to see an industry that feels authentic. I wanna watch a story and I want to feel that there was real care put there. But when I lay down at night, I can feel proud of, of how I've treated people on their worst day. And it doesn't ever get any easier. It really doesn't.